Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today we're going to take a quick first look at Flight Sim World. Now, uh, to say this has uh, ruffled some feathers is putting it lightly. So, I'll give my overall opinion on Flight Sim World at the end, but just a quick preview. Do I think this is worth buying? Actually, yes I do. I do think it is actually worth buying, especially now while the price is cheap. 25 bucks ain't bad for this and uh as things get added i'm sure it's gonna be worth it but uh the thing is as arc survival evolved has recently shown us prices don't always stay the same for early access games they can go up even despite how stupid that was so i do recommend getting this now if you want it uh if, if you have no care for it then uh, don't bother so here on the main menu first of all I like this UI. I really do like this UI. Uh, I like this UI in Train Sim World. It looks phenomenal. It's really good. Uh, the only thing I have a complaint about is uh, you have to log into your Dovetail Live thing every single time when it starts. You don't have to. You can skip it by clicking the skip button over here. It's exit right now, but when you first start, it'll be skip. And you can just skip that. My only complaint about that is it won't remember your email. Uh, it won't, there's no option here for it to remember the details so you can just type the password and connect. Uh, my other big complaint is in the realm of graphical options, we only have the simplistic ones here. We, I, I really want to be able to go in and configure these a little bit more detailed to that. Other than that, I uh, so really like the UI, but uh, as you can see, you got training just like always. Uh, I think these are the flight school training job missions. I think there is more, but uh, it's only showing me those. We do have missions. Right now it's only showing me the, uh, the first mission, which is the Los Angeles approach. And just so you guys know, they added workshop support recently. That was something they brought in, so you can download new missions. Uh, but the main thing we want to look at is free flight. So, unlike with FSX, you have you don't have the ability to set up a default flight anymore. Uh, unfortunately, with FSX, you could set up a default flight and it would launch the plane that way every time. So you could set the plane to be cold and dark if you wanted. All sorts of fun stuff. Can't do that anymore, sadly. But uh, you can select a home airport. So... Here's my neck of the woods, Jacksonville, Florida, and I do like this uh, screen. If we go back real quick, the first thing we need to do is select an aircraft. So these are all the default aircraft, uh, and these are all Coronado planes, except I think the RV-7 and I think this one, I can't remember. I know this one was, I don't know about this one, was made by Alibeto and published by Coronado, but other than that, I do know all these are Coronado planes. Now, I have these two in FSX, so I might do a comparison of them one day, a dedicated comparison video. I think I have that one too, I'm not sure. I've never flown these two in FSX, so I don't know what to expect with them. Uh, the Super Cub I've never flown, and the RV-7 I have never flown. Uh, so, you can sort them here by engine type or manufacturer and developer. Right now, only dovetails there. This last one's grayed out. I'm assuming that's category like jet prop turbo all that fun stuff so i'm they're probably going to be bringing other aircraft into it jets in the future so i would expect to see some uh, aircraft of different engine types right now it's all props piston engine airplanes that's just how they wanted to start uh, if we take a look at the seneca which is probably what we're going to fly you see this little pop up on the left side over here that tells you all the details at a glance of the aircraft now, for those of you who don't know, that actually was an FSX too, but it's a little box that scrolls down below the aircraft select. You had to click more details to see it. So you probably never saw that. I do like that it's front and center right now. Uh, these are just general characteristics. Uh, we're going to go with the Piper Seneca today, PA-34 Seneca. Seneca 5, not the Seneca 2. Okay, so... Now we need to set weather conditions. As of right now, it's all weather presets. 
and you can see the summary of the weather over here. So gray and rainy, rain, decreased visibility, especially in aircraft without wipers. I don't think any of the aircraft have wipers right now. Uh, day, it's daytime and it's autumn. So time and weather are both set by these presets. We're gonna go with just fair weather, which in FSX was standard atmosphere with clouds. And for our departure airport, we're gonna pick good old JIA. Uh, this is a good area to see how how the nav data has been updated. I can tell it has because P50 is here. Uh, I will link to my Dropbox in the description if you want to get some of these updates in FSX. There's some scenery I've made. P50 was not in FSX by default, but it is here in Flight Sim World. I do have some scenery that will add it if you want it, but uh, it's nice to see it is here by default now. Uh, JIA, EY, the NDB that was right here is gone. And I believe JIA has been updated too. Uh, real quick, let's look down here. I can't tell. Are they drawing class Delta airspace? No, they're not even drawing class Delta airspace on here. So I can't tell if Ocala does have uh, its air new airspace dimensions. We're going to spawn at JIA. Now, it does want to start building a flight plan right off the bat. But you can simply right click to get rid of that and we'll just confirm now we are fully ready to go and we could click start and start flying however these config buttons right here allow us to more accurately edit different options now right now config for airport is not doing anything my guess would be that would allow you to configure a parking spot. Right now, it just spawns you on the runway, engine running, ready to go. So that doesn't work now. Right I'd expect that to come back in the future. Uh, now, I do like this. Clicking config on aircraft gives you this uh, little POH back here again with all the information on it. And you get quick edit options as well as more detailed edit options. So quick edit, we can quickly edit the fuel and the payload of the aircraft. Now this, this is important because there's a new feature that we'll show you in a second that just got added on the last update at time of recording. And uh, it's something I really like. Uh, we can also set up failures if we want, just quickly set failures. Uh, if you want a more detailed setting, you can go here with the sliders or you can enter in the number and it will snap there. Now, payload works all the same. Now, keep your eyes on this down here as I go back to quick edit, start adding people on. We got just a pilot, pilot and a co-pilot, low packs up. We got an indicator here. We are over the max takeoff weight. Thank you so much. Uh, X-Plane 11 did this too. And I really liked that X-Plane 11 did that. It immediately showed you if you were over the weight. In FSX, you had to go back to say to see if you were over the uh, max takeoff or not, or max gross weight. Here, it immediately tells you. Really, really like that. We're going to go with crew, uh, fill tanks. Um, I'm also going to lower this to 125. You'll see why later. I'm not going to set up any failures. I don't know if these have been expanded. Six cylinders. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of this has been expanded. In FSX, this is dependent on the CFG file. If the CFG file was properly set up, you'd see more failures here. Individual cylinders can fail. So all this looks pretty much the same. Liveries, only one livery for this plane, but I do know the Saratoga does have more. Uh, we can also config weather, just like always. Time and season can also be configured as well. We're just going to leave it as is with one notable change. I learned this from FSX. I'm going to lower the visibility down to 40 miles. Uh, if it's infinite, then you can just see for eternity. That's not the most realistic, and it actually doesn't look that good. So I do recommend lowering the visibility to 40 miles, 64 kilometers. Everything else is good. Uh, we'll leave wind alone. Time and season, we're just going to leave that as is. Clouds, wind, temp, and visibility. I'm assuming this means you'll be able to do more detailed weather edits in the future. 
Uh, the weather engine has been very simplified in this, so that's why it's only weather themes right now. But uh, they are, I know they're going to be updating the weather engine. I don't know exactly what they plan on doing with that, but it'll be interesting to see. Let's go ahead and start flying. Although before we do, I got one last comment. Whoever did this music, th this music's really nice. I turn off the main menu music in Flight Sim X uh, because it's really annoying and there's a nasty little bug where it can actually crash the game on the main menu. But this menu music is really good. I don't know if Dovetail licensed this song or if someone from the audio department wrote it or made it or what, but I like this music, <laughs> whoever you are. All right, let's go ahead and start flying. All right, so real quick reference. Uh, it took about a minute for that to load, which is not, not too bad. Uh, the music starts to fade out as it completes its loading. That's one way you can tell. The, the loading bar is gone. You just get this little circle here. But the music does fade out as it reaches the end of the uh, load time. Not as good as Planet Coaster does. I love the way Planet Coaster fades the music out when loading's done, but uh, that's... Let's, I'm going to shut up about that. When you first start, this is what you're greeted with. Uh, you get the option of doing your flight plan again. Uh, I think you can also change the aircraft and other stuff. But uh, we're just going to stick with the Seneca. As you can see, we're on the runway at Jack's ready to go. No option to configure the plane. Uh, go ahead and click Start. Now, a couple things I want to point out. There have been some uh, things that were done as add-ons in FSX, paid add-ons, have been added as default here. Uh, you might see it later when we start accelerating down the runway, but the camera is a lot better now. Uh, you, it, It's like having a, a camera add-on. And as you... Why does the battery keep clicking on and off? And as you heard, uh, AccuFeel comes included now, which is really, really nice. I love AccuFeel as an add-on. All right, so let's take a look at the airport. So first check, yep, runway 8, that is correct. It was runway 7 by default in FSX, but that was because the runway has since updated. Uh, so it is runway 8 now, which it should be. Uh, new terminal is there. That's good. Uh, FSX had the old terminal. And this here is nice because this is a very recent addition. This is not even a year old, I don't think. Or it might be a little over a year old now. That little taxiway, that's taxiway Victor there that connects these two side taxiways. That's a new addition, and they caught that one. Uh, one minor problem. This is not a building. Uh, this is not supposed to be a building over here. It looks like it's a building. Yeah, it's a building. Worse, yeah, it's an office building, too. And that's not what that is. That is actually a aircraft shelter where you park aircraft underneath it. That's the ANG ramp, Air National Guard ramp over there. Uh, there should be a taxiway here connecting these hangars as well. There's not. Oh, that's minor. Okay, one thing I would point out. This is not the GA ramp. This is the cargo ramp. This is where UPS parks. The GA ramps are over here. This looks like they got this as a GA ramp, but this is the cargo ramp, and this is GA, and this is cargo, so that's a little mixed up. But I have a, a working theory. I'm pretty sure there's a bot that makes these airport AFCADs for the default airports. I don't think it's an actual human making them. I think it's a bot that does it. So I will let that slide, and we're going to fly down to Craig and uh, show you something real quick. I've actually already... Uh, flown around a bit in Flight Sim World to see how things are and to set up my controls. So right now I am getting right around 30 frames per second just looking at it and yeah it already looks better than FSX, runs better. I'm running everything on Ultra. Now I want to point something out. My computer does not meet the minimum system requirements. I have a lower end system than what the minimum system requirements say I should have. And yet I am running 30 frames per second with everything on Ultra. So that's not too shabby, actually. I do like... Everything looks a little too bright for my taste. 
Uh, X-Plane had that problem too. With I think that's something to do with the way the PBR is. All right, where did it go? Hold on a second. Is that on or off? I can't tell. It was apparently on. Normally it's flipped up for on. The battery sound keeps clicking on and off, and it's really annoying. Alright, so this aircraft has a G600, I believe is what this is. And it defaults to north up. That's a real pain in the butt. Uh, we also have GNS430 avionics. Why is the battery doing that? Click it on. I'm not going crazy. You guys can hear that, right? The, the battery clicks on. You hear the gyros spin up. Clicks off. Gyros spin down. I'm not going nuts. I am actually hearing that, right? Alright, so, well, we'll just have to ignore it for now. It's an early access, so there's going to be some bugs. I think those are, let's see, push open. Yeah, they're closed right now and they should be open. So let's open them up all the way. I think the prop sync switch is right here. Turn prop sync on. Set this to VFR squawk and altitude mode on. High RPM, full rich. Don't need any of this on. Yaw dampener is off. Now, I was playing around earlier and I'm I'm gonna try something. We're gonna listen to ATIS real quick. Airport information. Whiskey. One seven four four Zulu. Com. Visibility. Greater than twenty miles. Oh, that's a Second shame. Condition. Clear. Temperature. One five. Marker Three should be muted. Five. Is that on or Altimeter. muted? Yes. Niner. Niner. Two. Visual runway three two and use landing and departing runway three two VFR aircraft state direction and flight all aircraft read back hold short instructions advise controller on initial contact you have whiskey. One second, I'm just going to tune this to tower one seven four four Zulu. Oh, that didn't work. Um, visibility that's and twenty miles. That's a paddling. That should have worked. Clear. Uh, see, Temperature one eight point three five. 2.5 altimeter 2 niner niner 2 visual runway 3 2 and landing and departing runway 3 2 VFR aircraft state direction and flight all aircraft read back hold it's got me on com 1 for some reason or com 2 no put me on com 1 I want to be See, turn that on pilot actually and I turn it to crew mode I don't think any of that worked you know what I'm just gonna ignore that damn thing for now alrighty then inside airspace you know for some reason the airspace is not showing up so I want to go ahead and get in the air but first I am going to switch this over to frickin track up Thank you. Track up, please. Hold on a second. Map. Orientation. Track up. Enter. Is that not... It's still in north up. Well... At least you do have toss on here. That's nice. So you can go to uh, toss. That's re well. I don't know if that's I'd call that reversed or not. Yeah. That is the ox page. Can't go to flight plan. Yeah, this is not a hundred percent how it's supposed to be. It wasn't this, it wasn't correct in the uh, FSX version of this aircraft either. 
I'm gonna shut up. We're gonna just turn our freaking lights on. Fin. Okay, that's not right either. And I have. None of those are right. Oh, fucking well. All of our lights are on. We're just gonna take off. So we can get in the air. Now, the Seneca. I shouldn't get too much in terms of P factor from it. I believe it has counter rotating props. And it is holding us pretty straight. Red line, 90 rotate. She gets off. Pause to break gear up. Blue line speed. The, uh, the line speeds aren't shown on the speed tape of the PFD. That's unfortunate. Told us about 100 knots. I believe that's where VY is. Coming through 500 feet. We'll go ahead and reduce manifold pressure. We're just going to do a quick hop down to Craig. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the uh, the prop. So we're just going to use manifold pressure. We'll take her up to about 2,000. Let's go ahead and start a turn to the right. You go south. So as a November by one one eight. Let me shut these guys up. Yeah, that that. November five Shut them guys up. Yeah, the ATC voices. I am not a big fan of. All right, so I'm gonna bring manifold pressure back. We're gonna do a quick flight test. I'm gonna hold us about fifteen hundred. On about 150. We're inside the white arc, so dump the flaps. Blue line, lower the gear. I want to get us in slow flight real quick. Let me get back to 1500. I'm going to test these physics. This is how I test physics. I put the plane in slow flight. Now we're slow enough. We should be on the back side of the power curve. So now our controls should be reversed. And it should be power for altitude. So I need to increase power to maintain altitude. And pitch for airspeed. I need to pitch up to maintain airspeed. Let's get it really far down there. Yep, get some buffeting. Rough air going over the uh, whoop, stall. Let it break, let it break. Take it right back up. Yeah, it doesn't... It's kind of hard to tell if it's behaving correctly. All right, power out. Power in to maintain. Whoa, speed just fluctuated a lot there. Wow, I can barely hear that stall horn. Yeah, it, it's not wanting to work correctly. All right, recover. Gear up. There's a blue line, flaps up. Let's try and, I need to try that in the Piper. The Seneca is probably not the best airplane to try that in. All right, let's get back up to 1500. Start navigating to Craig. Let me find my way around. There's downtown. That's 295 right there, which means the Dames Point Bridge is right over there. There's the plant. So that happy light over there should be Craig. There's 1500. Let's let's talk to Craig. Nearest airport list. Jack's executive at Craig. That's the correct name. Uh, tower 132.1 and we're going to request a full stop landing tower piper november one, god i one, hate these voices Sierra, so much Illo is nine miles northwest with november to land piper november 118 sierra kilo tower may price stand wind runway 32 ultimate downwind for 32 
Atlanta, right, downwind, runway, three, two, Piper, eight, Sierra, Illo. All right, I'm all set. Heading bug to three, two, zero. That'll be my runway heading. Pretty much just gonna enter straight onto the downwind. So, flight physics, I, this isn't the best plane to, te to uh, demo them in. I have to try the Piper Cub. But it does look pretty good. It sounds fantastic. It runs great. There's a little bit of a frame rate stuttering happening at the moment, but not much. back Piper and start down. Seven zero Yankee. Turn next taxiway. And someone's on the ground down there. Oh god, I really hate those voices. Those voices are so bad. <laughs> I think if you sped them up, they'd sound a little bit better, but I still got that going on. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but there's some, uh, I think, I don't know if you'd call that screen tearing, but there's something going on over there on the horizon. We'll just do a quick landing at Craig, and then I just got a couple things Piper to show you. Seven zero Yankee, turn next taxiway. Piper seven zero Yankee, contact ground on one two one decimal eight. Decimal. Decimal. One two one decimal eight. Decimal? What? Decimal? You're kidding me. It's 121.8, damn it. You're in America. <laughs> Freaking have it there an anxiety attack calling 121 decimal 8. What country do you think you're in? So overall, I do like flight. Uh, when we get on the ground, I'll show you uh, the uh, a couple or one thing I want to point out about it. Oh, one thing I did want to show you. I need to go to an outside view for this. But if you look in the um, the aircraft, and you can see that there are people inside the plane, and that is actually tied to your payload. And I've done some experimenting, and not only is it tied to your payload, which character model is displayed is tied to the actual weight in the air in that station. So now you can put passengers on, and you can visibly see them in the aircraft. No longer is it an empty seat. Can't see them in the VC, unfortunately, but oh well. Really neat, Piper neat feature. Two, six, uniform, cleared to land, runway three, two. It's not me, that's someone else. Three, two, land, runway, three, two, Piper, two, six, uniform. Where's Piper 26 uniform? Is that him? Way to frack over there. Kiss my ass, I'm not landing behind him. It's a fucking super cub, he'll take forever. See, in real life, that that Piper would not have gotten clearance to land. It's one of these two. I think it might, it's either him. It might be him, actually. I would have got clearance to land first. Look at the draw Piper distance. Sierra Kilo cleared to land runway 32. Follow the aircraft on final. Okay, so it must be that guy. Piper November 3-0-4-5-7-1-0 miles uh, I'm landing in front of him. Three, two, approach. Hyper November three zero four five seven tower. Make straight in. Runway three two. Altimeter two niner niner two. Cleared to land. Runway. All right. Two, below one twenty. I'm Sierra landing in front of him. I'm not waiting around. That guy's way too freaking far out. Flight two runway three two. Piper got plenty four, I can get in front five, of him. Seven. Turn on to the base leg. Just below 120. Gear down. Turn on the final. 
So yeah, those passengers you see are tied to the uh, the payload in the plane down to the specific weight. If you notice, the co-pilot was a female, and that's because I set 120 something pounds there. So it is actually tied to the weight. I've experimented with it, and it seems the heavier the weight, it does change the model. 170 is about the weight of your average male, so there'd be a male there if it's 170. At least I think. It seems to follow that, that sort of idea. Alright, I got no flaps. Probably should think about adding some. We're inside the wide arc, but let's just add one notch of flaps for now. Because I'm a little lower than I would like to be. Left. Hyper H Sierra Eco Around. No, screw you. I'm landing in front of that dude. You should have gave me landing clearance. I was closer and faster. So the ATC logic still needs improvement. Coming in. A little on the fast side. Hyper H Sierra Kilo. Acknowledge last transmission. Fuck you, ATC. off the center line. Hyper H Sierra Kilo. Did you copy? No, I did not copy. Piss off. Hyper H Sierra Kilo. Contact ground on one two one decimal H. One two one decimal eight four piper eight Sierra Kilo. Oh. All right, now I wanted to land at Craig because I wanted to show you something. Remember when I said I'm pretty sure it's a bot that uh, does the AFCAD building for default airports? Uh, the reason I think that is because FSX has twenty over twenty four thousand airports in it. You really expect the human to sit down and make? 24,000 AFCADs for 24,000 different airports and to the level of detail FSX has, I mean, when you really think about it, it's, it's actually pretty detailed. So I'm pretty sure there's a bot that's just pulling data from wherever they get it and it makes these AFCADs. And they must have changed some of the parameters on that bot because uh, default FSX Craig did not look this good. Alright. It had to be improved by senior designers such as myself and Art Poli. Uh, notice here, it does have the run-up areas. Uh, it has lengthened 2, 3, and 5 to be the more exact lengths. Hyper 4, 5, 7, here, to land, and, uh, If I go into slew mode, you see this hanger over here? I think they've changed the bot's parameters to favor library objects over generic buildings. This is a library object. This was actually included with FSX, but a lot of the library objects, there's a lot of them, and a lot of them just go unused, and it's really weird because there's a lot of pretty detailed library objects that just don't get used anywhere in the sim, and it's weird. Here's one of them right here. You hardly ever see this object at default airports, and yet here it is. I'm pretty sure they've done something to that bot. Uh, to show you what I mean, come over here. So here you see another hangar with open doors. This is also another library object. You saw this one more often in FSX, but still not near as much as you really could and should have. Now this is what FSX preferred to use. This is a generic building. Now a library object is actually made by an artist in a 3D modeling program. Someone actually made this object and uh, textured it and everything. And now a generic building is basically procedurally generated. Uh, it The sim tells it to draw a building in this shape with this texture at this position. Now generic buildings are really good at filling in airports uh, and still keeping a good frame rate. Uh, see, you can have both these hangers here and they cost next to nothing in terms of resources and they still look appropriate. This is these hangers are the correct size and correct shape. So this is almost the correct door, too. There should be another door right here, but uh, I'm not going to... That's nitpicking. I'm not expecting that level of detail out of this, especially out of generic buildings. See, I know how the scenery engine works. 
but yeah, it it's favoring library objects over generic buildings in some instances. Like that that is that's pretty close to accurate right there. That's not too terrible really. So they're they've done something there with that bot. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with Flight Sim World. Uh, we're going to go back and change. I want to show off two things real quick. So real quick, we're just going to show off those two things. Right, so this is the one thing I wanted to show you. Look how freaking dark it is at night. But what the hell is up with the sky? Um... Dovetail, you need to fix that. That doesn't even look close to right. But, um... Just look at how dark it is. It is insanely dark. Now, to be clear, hate the sky, like how dark it is. Now, I don't know where the moon's at, but... Let's see if we can't find the moon real quick. Ooh. Let's see. Let's go into slew mode look around for the moon there it is over there so if we look at the moon oop, I forgot we're in slew mode looks so like we have about a half a moon right now I should see more of the ground than I currently see yeah I do like that it is much darker by default that makes flying at night a lot better because now you can do things like black hole approaches. Uh, I've talked about black hole approaches before, but uh, it, it's really hard to do them in FSX because of just how bright everything is at, at default by night. Not here like that. That's a black hole approach right there. You can't see squat. You got, well, it's not a true black hole approach. There is some light references on the ground, but a black hole approach is when you have no light references other than the runway. So you just get this this light in a dark tunnel effect, and it can really throw you off. And if you're not careful, it could smash into the ground. That's one thing you got to be aware of uh, flying at night. And we'll definitely be able to have it, but we're, I, this is not ideal. What's ideal would be uh, the moon, the phase of the moon actually controlling how much light is available on the ground that's how it's supposed to work this is a little overkill <laughs> in terms of darkness and my least favorite part now i selected the piper so i don't know if it has much in terms of lights on it but the lights don't do very much like you can't the lights don't even light up the ground now i'm it's so early in the early access phase it's only a couple months i think they're on like update six now so yeah they'll probably fix this in the future but uh, yeah th this I don't think I'll be doing any night flights in flight sim world that's for sure a little too dark <laughs> and now the second thing I wanted to show you and then we'll close out this video okay so this last thing that I'm gonna show you is definitely what turned a few heads <laughs> um, during the lead up to flight sim world's early access release you can hear the raindrops hitting the airframe, so you know what's coming. Let's look at the raindrop effect. Yes, it looks really good. Now, quick test. It is lowering my frames a little bit. Not by much, though. In fact, uh, it's not lowering very much at all. Uh, I was getting 30 frames per second earlier. I'm probably getting about 20 to 25 frames per second now. So, these raindrop effects. I have been a big proponent of raindrop windshield effects. There's only a handful of aircraft made for FSX that have them, and I, I really freaking like them. I can't stand it when there's a working windshield wiper, but no windshield rain effect, because it kind of defeats the purpose. And the reason I'm such a big fan, I know some people are like, ah, it's, uh, what's the big deal? It's just raindrops on the windshield. But... Seriously, go fly a couple of the planes that have it in FSX. There's a few freeware ones. The cockpit mods for the freeware, or the freeware cockpit mods for the 7.3 and the 7.4, the default ones, they they add the windshield rain effect, and you would be amazed how big of a difference that makes. Uh, it's not 
pretty. It's not definitely not as pretty as this. I'm gonna hold the brakes real quick and throttle up. Whoa, the brakes are very ineffective on this plane. But you can see the wind, the raindrops are starting to uh, spread across the windshield. So that's nice. Whoa, the freaking brakes on this plane are shit. <laughs> I expected the brakes to be a little bit more effective than that. <laughs> I think I need to get my brakes checked. Anywho, uh, we're at St. Mary's. Where are we? That's the cross runway there. Let's turn around. So yeah, the, the raindrops I really like, and they're not lowering the frame rate near as bad as I thought they would. This is the first time I've actually turned them on. So yeah, like this gets a big thumbs up. You guys know I'm a big fan of raindrop effects in Flight Sims. So my overall opinion of Flight Sim World, I think it's really good. It's, I know some people have sort of just tossed Dovetail to the wind, not even paying them any attention. like. Uh, of course we're going to be head to head. Uh, I think he's given me some room. I might be able to get on that taxiway there. So, I know some people just sort of just ignored anything Dovetail does. Uh, just pretty much just hating on them entirely. And I don't see why. Because I'll be perfectly honest. I have a hard time hating this. because For, for several reasons. One, Dovetail's doing everything a good early access developer would do. They're doing everything right, so I have a hard time tossing them under the bus. Secondly, this looks really good. Aside from the complaints I've had, and the only one that's major is the night thing, where it looks way too dark for the phase of the moon, and the lights just don't do anything. I'm sure that'll get fixed, or better get fixed, or I will I will go to Dovetail and punch somebody, but, uh, and it, yeah, I'm sure that will get fixed. So they're doing everything right. Their initial product looks good. Like this is what, if you were t to tell me you were going to do an early access flight sim, this is what I would expect minimum before I'd say it's worth spending money on. Now, I know Aerofly is a thing and I don't ever recommend Aerofly and the reason being is because I just it's too expensive and you don't get very much for it. Whereas both, whereas FSX has more than Aerofly does and is cheaper, this has more than Aerofly does, aside from aircraft selection and is cheaper. X-Plane has more than Aerofly does, but is more expensive. And X-Plane brings up another thing. This is really good and it's cheap. It's only 25 bucks. Now we know Dovetail's gonna do DLC. DLC's their MO. So, avionics, lights, and mixture. So, I hate the fact that a lot of flight sims cost as much as they do. When you're already expected to spend a lot of money on add-ons, I don't think it's fair to charge $60 for the initial sim. This is only 25 bucks, and look how good it looks. This, this, yeah, I can safely recommend this. This is a very good-looking sim. It's not all there yet. If I, if I am honest, I'd say buy it now, just in case the price does go up in the future, and just have it sit on your Steam list until it's worth playing. I don't think it's worth switching from FSX yet, and I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm, if you guys remember the past few sim videos. Uh, over the year, I've been saying I'm thinking I'm going to be switching Sims. Um, I was on the track for Prepare 3D, but I, I here's the thing: I was going to go with Prepared because of backwards compatibility and lower switching cost issues. I was I wanted to give both Flight Sim World and X Plane 11 a fair chance. Now X Plane 11, sorry, did not impress me near as much as it needed to to get me to switch to it. So, yeah, X-Plane 11, not going to happen in the near future unless money becomes not an object, and then I can just afford to have more than one sim. But, 
prepared 3D, I, even with version 4, I'm not convinced. I'm just, I just don't want to go to it because backwards compatibility is just not a thing anymore with 64-bit and a lot of people charging to go over to pair, prepare it if you want. You got to rebuy a lot of stuff. And I'm just, I just don't want to do it. It's just got hundreds if not thousands of dollars invested in FSX. And I don't want to have to buy all of that again. I, 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 I'm not interested in buying an already expensive game and buying increasingly expensive DLC again and again and again for it. I'm just not interested in doing that anymore. Now, Flight Sim World's cheap, looks good. As far as DLC is concerned, yes, there's going to be DLC, but Dovetail has a better track record in the sense that their DLC is produced very well. Most of the DLC on Flight Sim X Steam Edition, I'd say a good portion of it's probably pretty good. A lot of it's Aerosoft, HOA, and Coronado add-ons, and uh, they don't really make crap. Not even Coronado makes truly crap when you look at what really bad add-ons are like. Carnata's a freaking bastion of quality compared to some of them. But, yeah, they're cheaper on Flight Sim X Steam Edition. They go on sale a lot more often. They have a money-back policy protected by Steam's terms and conditions. There's a lot of incentive to go with this one. The switching cost is a lot lower when compared to X-Plane because it's the same engine with the same key commands. Most of it pretty much works. So, yeah. I think what I'm going to do is play around with Flight Sim World some more, especially as updates go live. And uh, I'll keep with FSX for now. I don't see the benefit in switching to Prepared or X-Plane I'm just going to stay with FSX for now, settle in for the long haul, and maybe in the future, please tell me those work, maybe in the future when this is better, it's got more content in it, then we can uh, switch over fully to this, or maybe something else happens and prepare 3 ds the way I go. It's just right now, from my position, I think I'm just going to stay with FSX. So there you go. There's my opinion on Flat Sim World. It's actually really good and worth getting and <laughs> to the naysayers. So, yeah, this is really good. This video is a lot longer than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to sign it off right here and now. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we shall see you next time. Take care, everybody. It goes, Holy, wow, that's a crosswind. Holy cow. I wonder if I could pit maneuver.